We're in a game of League, and I'm about to show you how to win your games as Kalista. What is up, guys? My name is Meeps, and welcome back to yet another League of Legends video. So today, we are playing in none other than the spear-throwing Kalista. Not the one from Game of Thrones, but she's probably just as cool. Anyway, today we're playing this champion, and I hope you guys are really going to enjoy this one, because this is probably one of the most unique, and in my opinion, one of the most fun champions to play yes she has a big tenden tendency to go in and out of meta but she is an absolutely stunningly good champ and really fun to play regardless of the season yeah there are some seasons she does better than others but i think for the average player if you're below diamond i don't think it's going to matter too much if it's a champ that you're willing to invest the time into. The thing with Kalista is that she's a really, really hard champ to play. She has a like high, high skill requirement to actually do well on her, but then she also become really rewarding, which is the reason why some pros and high elo players have a tendency to every now and then choose her for top lane and just hard carry the game that way. Anyway, what I'm gonna be doing today is that I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to play Kais or Kalista, not Kaisa. Kalista in the early mid and late game, and the overall game strategy for her, and what kind of options you have. For those of you who are new in here, make sure to go down below, click that subscribe button, join into our awesome community. And also, if you do enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would hit that like button for me. And lastly, if you want to hang out with me live, then go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. Anyway, as we move down into lane, the first thing I want to cover is a little bit about the general of why you're picking this jam and what you can kind of expect. And then we'll start talking a bit more about how to actually play her in the early, mid and late game. And we'll just do every lane or explain the lanes as they be or the phases as they become relevant throughout the game. So this will be a very like practical way for you guys to learn the jam. All right. So first of all, this is a really, really fun one and she has a really high mobility. Uh, her mobility basically comes from the fact that uh, from the fact that her passive allows her to do this jump every time she auto attacks, which is honestly really cool. But it's also one of the parts that does make her extremely difficult to play. Uh, all right, so right here, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm actually gonna take my W here uh, for the sole reason that I'm gonna be able to to deal a little bit more damage with my teammate for a second there. Just in this specific engage, I felt like it was a better option. But for your general engage, it will be better to go directly for your Q as your level 2. Anyway, uh, one of the things I tried to do here, and I want to explain that really quickly before we go into the pros and cons, is you might have noticed that I autoed a, I, I threw an auto attack onto uh, a minion throughout the, uh, throughout the engage. Uh, and the reason why I wanted to do this, and it didn't work out as I wanted it to, uh, I'm a little rusty in terms of the overall damage of her early game. But the point being, what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to uh, put myself in a situation where I last hit it, would last hit the minion uh, with my E as well. Because this minion was pretty low health. So for that reason, if I could go ahead and I could get one spear onto that minion, last hit it while I also have spears on my opponent, then what would happen is that my rend would instantly go off cooldown and I would be able to use it again right away and this is a pretty neat pretty i don't want to say advanced trick but it is kind of advanced to pull off in fights and knowing the specific damage right here i kind of failed it a little bit but nothing that was devastating for the fight i just tried to get one spear onto it and see okay can i can i just last hit that one getting more than one spear on it would be a waste and even the one ended up being a waste but i i, I wanted to try and give that point across and even though it didn't work out here, I feel like the fact that I did it shows you the thought behind it, which is kind of the idea. As I've said before, these videos are not made to show you guys absolutely perfect gameplay. They're made to be entertaining, informative, and to illustrate how they're supposed to be played. Uh, I'm not focusing 100%. If I were, I would not be sitting here and explaining things at the same time. All right. So, uh, that's kind of the, the first thing about this that we got to keep in mind, that... Uh, we have this potential to actually reset our E, and it's something we'll talk much more about here in the laning, or about laning. But let's just, really, I really quickly want to go over some of the pros of playing this champion. First of all, she has really, really high mobility. She's extremely difficult to deal with in this sense. Uh, you can call, see, see it as both a pro and a con that she's hard to master, because this means that if you do master her, very few people will actually know specifically 
like when you're stronger than them and how to play against it because they're simply not used to playing against a good Kalista. So this is, can be seen perceived both as a pro and a con. Um, then we have things like her old combo. This one is really nice that you can pick up your teammate, both for the fact that you can save your teammate by using it if your teammate gets caught. And you can also use it offensively to uh, to throw people into... Um, uh, to throw them into your uh, enemies and use it as a stun. So there's a, there various different usages for this one. Generally speaking, I feel like the old is mostly used, uh, especially at lower elos, for just a safety precaution uh, to grab your teammate out whenever they're kind of failing. Um, then it's a get out of free jail card, basically. Um, so this is one of the things that we do want to want to keep in mind. Uh, if you're playing pre-mate, it does become a lot easier to. Uh, to use it more offensively uh, because then you can tell your teammate to jump in. A lot of people won't actually notice right away. Whoop. Right, we are going to try and get out, but I'm not going to be getting out of this. What I'm... Yeah. I was a good gang. We didn't have flash or anything. Yeah. I'll make sure that we do get into this one. It was... Yeah. I, we didn't have flash from before. I kind of failed. So this is, uh, this is the punishment, which is fine. We'll make sure we get into it. And I was not too focused on what was going on. Uh, I should have seen uh, this guy coming down here much sooner, uh, but I wasn't paying attention to the map. So, yeah, we'll just live with that one death we uh, we got, and that's it. All right. So, as, as we move back down, uh, this is some of the things. Your old is extremely good. You have probably the best kiting in the entire game of any ADC because of the natural kiting of your passive that allows you to keep jumping and that way kind of distracting your opponent. All right. Except from this, we have one other thing that a lot a lot of other ADCs doesn't have, and that's the fact that if Kalista is far ahead, then she's actually not a bad split pusher. Very few champions can deal with her on one-on-one. -on -one. There are, of course, some, but in terms of split pushing, she's actually not bad because she can duel quite a lot of people, especially melee champions, because they're simply not going to be able to sit on her once she gets some items. It's really difficult to... Uh, to basically, yeah, to sit on her because she just keeps jumping away and you're like, holy crap, just stand still for a freaking second, bro. <laughs> and Kalista doesn't. She just keeps jumping. Uh, she's honestly like if you give a kid, uh, a kid caffeine. This, that's kind of what Kalista is. Like a mixture between caffeine and sugar and then she just jumps around. That's, that's Kalista late game, which is amazing. All right. Um, so some of the downsides of playing her is, of course, she has a pretty poor early game. This is also what we've seen here. But I do feel like she doesn't get the credit that she should because, yes, she doesn't have the best early game. But it's actually not too bad either. Uh, she is very squishy. And even though she has really good kiting, then she can be caught by gap closers, which is something to be kept in mind. Um, try here. We are going to get a free kill right there. I... If this guy goes out a little too far, we're actually just going to go ahead and ult. Right here, I'm going to flash. This should get grant us a free kill. As you can see, absolutely outplayed. No way that this guy uh, had any chance of reacting to this. Like, we just flash forward to, to close the gap a little more. And before I do, do, do my flash, I grab my teammate because I actually take him along for the ride then. And he can just throw himself in and kind of just, yeah last hit the opponent i think here we'll take one armor plating just tell my teammate here we'll do one that's fine and we'll back out and the reason why we're not doing more is because there's too big of a chance of getting forced to stay in lane maybe their jungler comes down and shove the lane or uh thresh is already back the spawn timers are too low at the moment all right so as we're backing off let's start actually talking about how to play her early game and what we're doing and what I am doing and what I'm thinking. So now that we know kind of the, the ups and downs of this champion, um, then let's let's look at the laning phase. So first of all, as you guys have been seeing, our primary concern, what we need to focus the most on, and this actually counts on all ADCs, but that's your farm. Your farm in every single game is the most important thing because this is the biggest source of income. Yes, getting kills is also gold, but it's not our primary concern, especially not on a champion like uh, Kalista, where we're probably not going to be able to uh, to win all of our laning phases because she is not a early game champ. You can outplay them as you get better, 
uh just like we did here we kind of like uh we cheesed the thresh into this play of course but so that didn't have not much to do with us but afterwards we completely outplayed jinx using our old and our flash in combo and just catching her completely off guard uh, but in the early game, our focus is farming. If you get pushed under turret, that's totally fine. You are actually pretty easy for you to farm under turret. You can use your E. Just make sure that you last hit the minions using your E because then it resets and you also refund a really big portion of the mana. At late game, you will actually refund all of the spells mana, but at early game, it's not completely everything. All right. So this is something we want to keep in mind. So farming is number one priority. Generally speaking, we want to try and avoid uh, we want to try and avoid uh, fighting under uh, or pushing them under their turret and fighting under their turret because it's quite a big risk uh, to do so. Whoop! I'm gonna be close just in case this. All right, there we go. Um, so generally speaking, we want to try and avoid pushing them under turret unless we know where the enemy jungler and enemy mid laner is. If we do and we have priority in lane and we know that we're stronger than our opponent or we poke them down or something along those lines or we can push them so much that they have to focus on getting their farm under the turret, uh, then we can, of course, go ahead and do so. All right, right here is just going to be another free kill, most likely. I actually stepped in a mine that I didn't see there. Nice. All right, so right here, I'm going to go back a little bit. I'm going to grab. We're going to see if we can get... Oh, he totally missed it. Rip. All right. Right here, you can see just how sticky we are on our targets. Oh, my God. She got just out of my E range. That would have been enough. A good flash by her, by the way. Uh, and this is a good example of one of the key things that a lot of people do wrong on Callista. And I even do this as well every now and then. And that is basically that you get a little too greedy with the spears. Um, if you're playing her really, really well, what you need to be doing in terms of your spears is that you need to actually go ahead. And I know this is very like, oh my God, really, dude, do we need to do this? But it's actually a huge thing that can really help you out, at least as you're learning the champion, is to go down, look at the uh, the rend, hold over it, check it, says, see how much damage does the first one deal. You can see the first one is basically the 147 plus 79 for every sec every other spear after the first one. So if you just make like rough estimations off of it, the way you can see how many spears you have on a target is quite easy. You can actually click on the target and you will be able to see the spears up here uh, on a counter. So you can see right here, you can see if we attack this one, well, let's see, we can right here, we will be able to see the spear right there. And as we get more and more, you will be able to see more on these uh, minions. It's pretty difficult but to see because they die too quickly. Uh, we can do it on one of the melee minions and you'll be able to see us putting more than one on a target. So you can see right here, you can actually see right here, we have three on it and that's the damage that we didn't deal. So it can be a really good advantage to do so. All right, so our primary thing, we do want to poke in lane and you can actually do this while farming, which is pretty cool. The way we do this is basically by using or uh using the minions to kind of carry over the spears to our opponents or to reset our ability. And it's kind of cool the way that you do this. Oh, rip. That was close. Uh, it's kind of cool the way that you do this. You Your Q transfers spears. Uh, if if your Q hits a target and that target dies, then it's actually going to transfer the spear to... Or all the spears that were on that target to the next target in line. Uh, so whatever it hits afterwards. So you can use this to your advantage by putting spears onto the back line of minions. I'll see if I can do it here. We just need to not get grabbed. You can see if we put a spear onto this, if we can get one of them in range, we can queue that and we can actually transfer those spears to that target. So you can see, I'll see if I can do it. We did it earlier in the game as well. Uh, this is one of the good ways of gaining more spears onto the target. But actually the best way to poke is when your opponents go a little bit out of bounds, throw an auto onto them and make sure that you didn't have a spear onto a minion or onto a minion that you will kill using your E or put them on afterwards. Because this will allow you to reset your E, your, your rent, because you're killing a minion. So this gives you unlimited poke potential, plus it makes it very inexpensive for you mana-wise, meaning that you can actually do this throughout the entire laning phase without having to worry too much about your mana at all, uh, which is really cool. So right here, you can see right there, we just put it onto a minion as we have something on our enemies and we just kill the minion 
to reset the ability and that way we actually don't use any mana we do a ton of damage and we reset our ability all right so one of the things that i see and we talked a little bit about this earlier is one of the things i see the most is that you're trying to put on too many spears onto your opponent and this comes a little bit back to what we talked about earlier uh with or um with or e and counting the damage by looking at the number of stacks of your spears at least until you have this very natural feeling of how much damage you're dealing with it and the way this basically uh or wh what i mean with this is as you guys can see our first spear actually deals significantly more damage when we rent that one than every other spear after that so if we can go ahead and reset our rent using a minion, then we're actually going to be dealing so much more damage overall on the same number of spears. Uh, so you want to make sure that you try and utilize this to your advantage. This becomes even easier as you get an item like the Hurricane to put spears on other targets as well at the same time. Um, really do think about this because it can be extremely useful. So this laning phase is really dragging out. It seems like our other lanes are really struggling and really losing hard, which is, of course, kind of a problem. I uh, want to see if we soon can get out of this laning phase because I have a bad feeling that these guys are most likely going to go ahead and, uh, and start going a lot of people down here. All right, there we can see a lot of damage onto them that I'm not going to be able to finish her. All right. So basically here in the early game, play safe, try and poke your opponents using your transfer spears and just putting spears onto them. And then from there, uh, try and see if you can if you can do it in combination with last hitting a minion with your rend, then you reset your ability, which is absolutely oops. Uh, which is absolutely uh, devastating for the enemy because it allows you to use, keep using this ability that not only slows the target, but also deals a ton of damage. All right, so us getting this tower down now here is actually really, really important because of the fact that our team is losing everywhere. So we kind of need to to try and see if we can uh, can go into kind of a mid to late game here. Uh, so I'm going to back off. I'm not going to be doing it in this push because I have a feeling that they probably have vision. Really hope our team does not surrender here because that would actually kind of suck. Uh, but yeah, let's start talking about the mid to late game. So the basic idea about the mid to late game uh, let's go ahead, grab this one, and we will finish our hurry game. So the basic idea about the mid to late game is you actually have two options. This is very cool on Callista. Most ADCs are kind of just forced to go mid lane and, and and stay there, basically rotating every now and then to side lanes to gain minions, especially if your mid laner does not rotate. But as Kalista, you can both do the common ADC way, which is what we just talked about, which is basically that you want to go in, go to the mid lane, farm there, make your mid laner go side lane, and then from there, you want to go ahead and uh, join in on team fights. Kalista is an extremely good team fighter, especially as she gets Hurricane. She hits several targets at us one. She's hard to sit on, and she deals a ton of damage if she gets, the, it gets a little bit of sustained time to do so. So this is really, really cool that we can go ahead and do this. If your mid lane, of course, doesn't want to rotate, you will have to go side lanes and keep your XP and gold income up. The cool thing about Kalista, and this especially counts if you're ahead, it counts a little less if you are behind because you're probably not going to be able to pull it off then. But Kalista is actually not a bad split pusher. She really, really isn't. So if you are ahead, you can go ahead and you can actually, uh, you can actually go ahead and split push on her. She can one v one quite a lot of people because of the fact that she is so slippery like she's a really freaking slippery if you don't have a stun or something to kind of close that gap then she's going to be kiting you around she's going to be life stealing her way up and she's just going to be an absolute freaking pain for the enemies to deal with uh like one player will really struggle to to get you down i'm not saying that there are no champs that can do it I'm just saying if you're far ahead split pushing can actually be a very viable thing on Callista, which means that you have a lot of solo carry potential uh, by doing so. Even if your team might not be doing amazing, then you can go ahead, you can split push, and you can carry the game that way. So she she generates... Like, this is a champion with multiple options for, for how to actually uh, fully benefit from her. I think we're going to try and see if I can help here. I'm a little worried about this. We are going to be able to uh, get that one down. I should have healed right there, actually. My bad. Uh, yeah, I should totally have healed. I could have saved that guy. Uh, as we're moving up here, I actually think 
I can go ahead. And we can just do a real quick uh, cheesy play on this guy. Alright. So that was a good getaway. I didn't think Thresh was this close. Really, really nice getaway from them. Again, if she does get too close... Then I will punish it. But we are playing it kind of safe. Oh, nope. I see Warwick's coming up behind us. I'm going to try and just kite away. He does have ult, so we're probably dead right there. But this guy is like 13, 12 kills. We haven't died to him throughout this game, I think. Yeah, I don't remember if we died early to him. But anyways, my point being right there. And like, I should have, of course, noticed him coming sooner or expected him. But I really didn't. So, yeah. And this is part of the things when I do play these games kind of live. Yeah, I'm really sorry that we actually lost this game. Uh, it's hard when the or team surrender. I do think that was we could potentially win this. Uh, they did feed this war egg to a point where the game did become really hard. Uh, but you can see how we were doing nice. Even though Callista is not an early game champ, we were actually kind of winning the early game to an extent. We're doing very well. And as you move into late game, then think about your options here. If you're very fit, think about whether or not it makes sense for you to go split push or whether or not you should be going mid and do the normal ADC tactics and just farm up in mid. If your mid laner doesn't rotate, then you will have to go side lanes and pick up farm there. But you want to play around objectives then. In the team fights, Kalista is pretty straightforward uh, in terms of everything. You can use your ult to save your teammate, just like in the skirmishes in the laning phase. You can also use it to throw him offensively into someone or into someone that's trying to, to get to you on the back line. But generally speaking, on Kalista, you want to be going for the closest target. You never want to be trying to, to kite into the enemy. You want to always kite backwards and kite use your movement to be a little bit difficult or, or slippery for the enemy and go for the closest target. Try to use your E's such that if you last hit a champion with your E, then it actually resets and deals damage to the others, and you can do this several times. So try and really think about your usage of your E because it, it, it can mean the difference between you using your E like 10 times in one fight versus using it once. Uh, 10 times might be a little much, but you get the point, right? Um, so yeah, I hope you guys did find this one helpful, and I'm sorry that they, my team's chose to surrender uh, we did have an, a top laner that went 09 so i think some games are kind of unwinnable especially if the team surrenders then there's not much we can do but i do think there was a slight chance we could pull this one off because Kalista is an absolutely fun and amazing champion and uh, yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this one i hope you learned a thing or two if you did make sure to smash that like button for the youtube algorithm and don't forget to subscribe down below and join into our absolutely awesome community. And thank you to all of you, you guys who already subscribed. I really do appreciate it. And lastly, if you want to hang out with me, go to twitch.tv dash meeps underscore live. Uh, I would love to hang out with you guys. But that is going to be it for this one. As always, stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.